Okay. Uh, I will speak about the data we have in, uh, in Arosa. And another way to make a QC is to have multiple instruments, since it's, we are lucky to have that in Arosa. First, I would like to acknowledge the work of, of uh, the people here, Werner, who is in the room here. He, he is in charge of the instrument, and uh, Herbert Schill, that most of you know, is, is, is in charge of the data. And uh, a lot of work is done by these people. OK, just a, a picture of the terrace there for the one who haven't been in, in Arosa. We have the two single uh, brewer here and a double brewer. And uh, at that time, we had the, the iOS was there for calibrations. So we are in the mountain there. A few, and we have also in this uh, cabin here uh, the Dobson instrument. So we have both uh, type of instrument here, and uh, Arosa belongs to, to both networks uh, and submit data to WODC. So we are at about uh, 1800 meters above ground level, and uh, we are mostly doing the ozone and UMKE and less on the UV uh, data. And as you see, our first instrument went in 88 and uh, 93, 98 for, for the triad. So we have more than uh, 15 years of, of triad data. And uh, we have the, is it better, oh, maybe? <laughs> uh, and we have also a, a somehow a triad of, of Dobson there so that we, we really are lucky to have a lot of instruments. So I will just go through some uh, selection for data selection criterions and how we, I have compared these instruments. So this is a typical uh, time series of the ozone in Arosa from one of the brewer, the single uh, B40. And uh, you see that we, have almost, we can almost double the amount of ozone up there. And uh, the largest viability, like all the middle, middle altitude stations, is uh, at the spring, late winter spring. And we have, a nice, we have had a nice example last week that was mentioned yesterday for this, this low ozone. Over two days, we have a drop of about uh, 100 DUs uh, that we have observed in, uh, in Arosa with multiple instruments here. Most of the instruments are over the other. So that's kind of things which happen in spring, uh, a large change of ozone. So when I'm comparing the data, <coughs> Where first, we are doing the cleaning on single instruments, so uh, the usual 2.5 DU uh, requirement. And uh, the outliers are removed. And, and now we have also put uh, some kind of uh, automatic removal of outlier. And I will come back to that point a little bit later. When I compare the instruments, I, I require this uh, five minutes uh, time coincidence. And, but in fact, it mostly it's within uh, less than two minutes because uh, they are running on the same schedule. So it's 90% uh, it's of the data is less than two minutes. And uh, we consider either pairwise these instruments or compared to uh, the triad. This is just to come back to the, the removal of outliers. This is a simple case. Whenever you take a reference like, like the mean value or just the slope or uh, a higher order polynomial has the reference line for one day, it's easy in this case. If you go to when it's changing over time, you have to adapt. This is not a good point because this will be checked as outliers. So you have to go to higher order to really go follow the, the daily uh, change of the ozone. And you have tricky cases like that when you have few points. If you increase uh, the polynomial order, you will get some uh, some point like that, they will be said that it's you know, not outliers. So uh, Herbert Schill has developed one, uh, one of these uh, automatic removal of outliers. And depending on the number of points and things like that, he, he adapts uh, the, the filtering technique uh, to get to remove most of the data, other bad data. And uh, with this automatic screening of the data, he, he removed about 98% of the, the outlier. So now we compare. Uh, in Dobson units, two of these instruments here. So it just, so they are coincident in time. All the conditions that I have shown before are, are, are fulfilled here. And we see that uh, over, okay, from about 12 years or more of data, they agree to within, uh, on single basis, they, they agree to, to less than, than uh, five Dobson units. It's uh, almost something like three. And, but there are plenty of points here. If uh, I have here, it's now in percentage. And this is the distribution of the data, uh, because it's hard to see how many points are here. 
But so 90% of the, of the data are within 1%. So pairwise, all these instruments are within 1% for 90% for of the data. So that, that's, that's pretty good. But this is just when you do a pairwise comparison. And I have applied the same approach that uh, Fioletov and all have done when they had the paper on the triad quality. So that means that over one day you mimic, I mean, you, you model with a polynomial the behavior of uh, all the, the data you have for this day, and you compare after each instrument to this overall fitting of the daily cycle. And this is an example of what uh, we are doing in Arosa. We take a third order polynomial. I take all the points for the three brewers. I fit the black line here is a, is a fit of the daily cycle. And after, for each instrument, I'll, I, I am allowing uh, an offset just to, to re-fit re the, the same shape but to allow an offset. And this is somehow, the daily value would be here, we, have, uh, we are around noon, the value at noon here for the triade fit, and uh, the offset for each of the instruments individually. And now I, I will do statistics about these uh, offsets. So this is the value at noon, oh, it's about the same shape as before, but now we have only one point per, per day. And this is the distribution of each of the three brewer compared to the, to the mean or to the median. It, it, it doesn't make a difference if you take the mean or the median. And here you see that most of the data somehow uh, are within, I don't know, it, it uh, somehow like plus minus 1D. It's, uh, it's about what you can get here. This is also in Dobson units. And this is a distribution of the, for each of the, the instrument here. We see that distribution of this offset is, is somehow 1.5 DU for, for the, the 40, uh, slightly larger for the other two, but still they, they, are, they agree very well. And this is now in percentage. We see that most of these points here are within plus minus half a percent uh, between uh, compared to, to the mean of the, of the triad. And this is over the last uh, 10 years of data here. So this gives us somehow the, the goal that you can achieve with three instruments and uh, what somehow the, ba the basis that you can reach with the instrument. This is just a statistic about that, but in this case I have made a monthly average of these sets of data. And uh, this is a percentile 5 to 95 percent. So this is uh, the 595. And, uh, yeah, it's difficult to see, so I, I, I have uh, filled up the lines here. You see the 40, 90% of the data uh, within, or this is a dispersion of the, the, the median or the mean. Uh, that's some kind of the noise of, of, uh, of the instruments. It's uh, within a quarter of a percent. That's for 72, it's about the same. Slightly larger for the double monochromator, but still they are uh, quite good. And now this is... Uh, the deviation of the, the median of the deviations, how the time series deviate for each instrument from the triad mean. And also here we see that at least for the last, uh, the last couple of years they are within a quarter of a percent. So if you put both changes, you, have, you get something like that for this, the 40. This is a, the, the difference uh, for, for the 40 compared to the triad uh, statistic. 72, it's a little bit more changes here and, and here they were going uh, slightly apart but, but for the recent year they are, they are quite good and, and very stable. And uh, this is for the, the double monochromator. It's, well, it's a little bit more meandering. I, I don't know really what's, what's the reason for that but uh, maybe it's the way that we are making the adjustment at the end comparison. I don't know. But anyhow, for the last uh, years we see that we are, I would say, very good uh, uh, with this, this triad instrument. So uh, at that point, so that's uh, again, very good stability, the cohesion between the instrument is, is quite good, and uh, the number that I have mentioned up to now. <coughs> and uh, yeah, I think that uh, the error time series somehow is, is at the edge of what we can do with, uh, with this brewer. I think now we are at the it's a real reason to have noise of these instruments. Yeah, and uh, we could reach probably something like between point a quarter to a half a percent agreement with this, uh, this brewer. But uh, this is impressive. And just uh, 
to say that the Dobson also are now quite, quite just just one example of what we can do. This is the two brewers here. Maybe. And sorry, the light, the, the colors are not so good, but we have the 156 here, greenish light, and the, the, the violet the colors here. And we see now we have two Dobson which are taking data automatically, and we see that we really can see the same kind of features, small plateau here, and a decrease, and, and you can register that also with, uh, with Dobson instrument. And uh, now that we, we can run this instrument automatically, we, um, uh, Looking forward to see this, uh, how Dobson's compared. Uh, Pairwise also has, also has a triad of Dobson. It would make the same kind of statistics in a couple of years to see the stability of this instrument. And finally, I uh, remind you the intercomparison in Arosa that uh, Alberto is organizing. So everybody is invited to come and uh, to see the scenery here if the nice uh, weather will be present. <laughs> okay, that's it.